Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of net excess spread in a securitization for FRM candidates. This illustration is the example given by Christopher Culp in the assigned reading. And let me remind that net excess spread is a key type of internal credit enhancement. So this is not external credit enhancement. Examples of external credit enhancement include credit default swaps and lines of credit. In regard to internal credit enhancements for the securitization, we have subordination, over collateralization, or net excess spread. So let's take a look at the illustration of net excess spread. The example here is a very simplified securitization where we are securitizing a loan for 100 million. And so that is the asset, the credit sensitive asset that is being securitized. And recall, we can take a balance sheet perspective here so that on the left hand side, we have the securitized credit sensitive asset, the loan for 100 million. It produces the cash inflow or the cash waterfall. And then on the right hand side, we have the securities, the asset backed securities issued to investors in the securitization. And those are issued in tranches or bond classes that represent different loss layers. Now Culp's example here is an extremely simplified version where there's only two tranches. And the senior most tranche is a senior debt with a face value of 80 million. And then below that, a subordinated debt class with a face value of 20 million. And this is so simplified that the subordinated tranche is acting as the equity tranche. But from a balance sheet perspective, you can see that the 100 million in credit sensitive loan assets matches the face value of the senior debt plus the subordinated debt, 100 million on the right as well. And so now we can look at the net excess spread and we start we convert here from a balance sheet perspective to more like an income statement perspective. Here's the loan portfolio of 100 million and we'll assume that it earns LIBOR plus 1% or LIBOR plus 100 basis points. And here I've got an assumption for LIBOR of 4%. So that is the interest earned on these credit sensitive assets. So this is the cash flow that's generated by the securitized assets and 4% plus 100 basis points is 5%. So under this assumption, the credit sensitive assets are generated, generating in one year, 5 million in loan revenue. So that starts the top of the income statement. Then we'll also assume that there are senior expenses at 10 basis points, and that ends up being $100,000 on the 100 million loan assets. Then we come to the senior debt, that's this tranche right here. And we're going to assume that it pays investors LIBOR plus 50 basis points. So the securitization, the special purpose vehicle issues these tranche securities to the senior investors and they're going to expect a coupon of LIBOR plus 50 basis points. So at 4% plus 50 basis points or that's 4.5% on the 800 million in par or face value gets us 3.6 million. Again, that's 4.5% multiplied by 80 million is 3.6 million in annual coupon payments owed to these senior note holders. And so now we can look at what's left over for the subordinate tranche. And we just take an income statement perspective, the loan revenue of 5 million minus the 3.6 million coupon we're paying to these investors minus we have to take out the expenses. And that leaves a net excess spread of 1.3. By the way, if I did not include the senior expenses, then I have the gross excess spread. But we want to take out the senior expenses. So we have a net excess spread of 1.3 million. And that can be used to fund the subordinate class. So we can look at the subordinate, the subordinated tranche of 20 million and look at the return, which is 1.3 million divided by the 20 million of 6.5%. And if we take the 6.5% 
and subtract the LIBOR, we get what CULP gets here, which is the net excess spread under these assumptions of LIBOR plus 2.5%. So that's the excess spread as we expect it, and we can consider that a form of internal credit enhancement. And the reason is that that's the cushion that can be diverted to service the, the interest and or the principal if needed on the senior debt. So if there are defaults, this excess spread can be diverted to service this. That's why it's considered a form of internal credit enhancement. It can be diverted on either a pre-loss or a post-loss basis. If post-loss, then this excess spread can be paid as a dividend to these equity or subordinated tranche note holders. On a pre-loss basis, that means the special purpose vehicle, the securitization structure, is setting aside these excess cushion funds, really, in advance into a kind of reserve. And these funds can be, this excess spread can be deposited directly into a cash collateral account may be funded up to a certain point and then the ex and then from that point forward can be diverted to the equity holders. But if the excess spread is diverted on a pre loss basis, then it funds this cash collateral account, and then this cash collateral account is a form of over collateralization, which again is a form of internal credit enhancement. This is David Harper the Bonic Turtle. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for your time.